Hi there, welcome to the new video. Before we start the video, a very happy new year to each and every one of you. I hope this year will be better for all of us. Okay, so today we'll be going through this paper, which is titled as On Generating Extended Summaries of Long Documents. This paper is from IR Lab Georgetown University and Allen Institute of Artificial Intelligence. So let's start with the paper. But before that, let me plug in subscription call to action. So if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, but enjoy watching the videos, I would recommend you to do that ASAP because I have some very interesting papers lined up. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon because yesterday I was going through my YouTube analytics and found like only 11% of you have clicked the all notifications button. So if you are one of the subscribers who is watching this video, I would encourage you to just check if you have that all notifications button switched on or not. Having said that, let's start with the paper. Prior work in document summarization focused on generating short summaries that captures the high level view of the given document. But it is highly possible that nowadays when we are dealing with longer documents such as research papers, legal documents, patents, we might not fit all the salient points in that short summary. Such as for research papers, if you consider abstract to be the summary of the entire paper, then you'll notice like that does not include details about the methods or even the experimental conditions. So this area of research where we talk about generating the extended summaries becomes helpful for the people who are seeking more detailed information about the document. So yeah, in this paper, we present a new method for generating extended summaries for long papers. So the authors exploit the hierarchical structure that exists in these documents. So for example, in case of research papers, you have introduction, related work, methods, experiments, results, conclusion, future works. So all of these sections author explicitly uses for doing the summarization in this paper. And the paper majorly focuses on doing extractive type of summarization through the multitasking learning approach. So there are usually two types of summarization that people do. One is extractive, another is abstractive. So extractive as in you rank every sentence in that document in terms of some important score. And then you sample top K sentences based on their score with the underlying hypothesis that these are the most important sentences and are representative of the entire document. Whereas in terms of abstractive summarization, it is similar to how humans would summarize for a given text. They would kind of rewrite the entire thing in their own language in much condensed format. So with this, you can think of pros and cons of both of these methods. Like extractive summarization would be grammatically correct because you are directly extracting the sentences from the original document. Whereas for abstractive, it would look more human-like, but is prone to grammatical inconsistencies. Okay. So the authors use three long document summarization datasets, archive long, PubMed long, and long sum. And they find that the method outperforms in some of the cases or even matches the performance of the stronger baselines. So the baseline that they use is BERT sum, which is again with the techniques for doing extractive summarization based on BERT. We'll see to how that works in a while. Then their analysis shows that the multitasking approach can adjust the extraction probability distribution to the favor of summary worthy sentences across diverse section. Okay, so what they're saying is they found that the method that they propose kind of spreads the probability distribution of extracting sentences from various sections that were there in the paper rather than just maybe focusing on the longest section and extracting most of the sentences from there or maybe just selecting the leading sentences from the entire document which we'll see to like earlier baseline method was not able to cope up with. Okay, so let's move forward. So talking about the datasets on which they trained and tested their model, the first is Longsum. So this dataset was released as a part of Longsum challenge, where the aim was to generate the extended summaries of the scientific papers. So it had essentially two kinds of summaries. One was the extractive summaries, which was formed from Talksum dataset that had around 1700 extractive summaries of the research papers based on the video talks and the conferences. So they gave like top 30 sentences for every paper, which became the ground truth. Not only that, it also had abstractive summaries, which was something around 500. And the length of the summaries in that dataset ranged from 50 to 1500 words per paper. So they took a mixture of both of these sets, which formed 1969 papers for training and 20% of that were used for validation. So apart from this, they also went and created archive long and PubMed long. So for creating each of these datasets, they extract the papers whose abstract contains at least 350 number of tokens. So after which the resulting set contains around 11,000 instances from archive long and 88,000 instances from PubMed long. Okay. So yeah, that was about datasets. Now talking about background and methodology. So they first formally define what extractive summarization is. 
So let P be a scientific paper containing sentences S1 to SM, where M is the total number of sentences in that paper. Then extractive summarization is defined as a task of assigning a binary label, either 0 or 1, to each of the sentence within that paper. So yeah, that we have already discussed, like you have a sigmoid or logistic, any kind of a learnable function that takes in a sentence and says whether it should belong to this extractive summary set or not. So they use a prior work called Birdsum for this purpose. It is a bird-based sentence classification model that was tuned for summarization. They are building something on top of already trained model, which was Birdsum. Okay, so I'm not really sure if you guys know about Birdsum already. So let's talk about that method as well. The actual paper is titled as Fine-Tuned Bird for Extractive Summarization. And if I'm not wrong, it is from University of Edinburgh. I'll try to link that paper in the description box. Make sure to check that out. So the idea is like they have used BERT for doing extractive summarization. So at very high level, they would take every sentence from that paper P, let's say. They would pass it through BERT and the BERT would say whether it should be 0 or 1, where 1 being it should be selected as a part of extractive summary and 0 being it should be rejected. So the architecture goes something like this. Let's say we had five sentences. Let's call it sent 1, sent 2 till sent 5. And then you have separator token over here, which is usual thing that you have for normal bird as well. They also impose a CLS token at this position. So if you remember, like an in initial bird or the original bird, you would have like CLS position only in the starting. Whereas in this case, you would insert CLS at the end of every sentence. Again, the idea is pretty same. In the original one, the idea was the starting CLS would capture the meaning of all the things that have kind of succeeded it in an embedding format which you'll use and pass it to some neural network for doing some classification in this case as well the intermediate cls token would capture the succeeding sentence representation so cls at this position would be capturing the information about send 5 so yeah that is the hypothesis to how and why the cls are defined in between and as you can guess the embeddings learned for these cls intermediate positions would be passed on to some logistic or some kind of a classifier saying if this sentence should be included or not so in that way, it kind of transforms the sentence selection procedures in the similar format to how you train named entity recognition model. So there also you have like words coming up at the input sequence. And for every word you want to say, if it was an organization, person, place or thing, at that level, you kind of do those one-to-one -one classification. So yeah, similar is the idea. Now let me just fade it out a bit. So you represent all of these tokens as a combination of three embeddings. So the first is token embedding. Then you have interval embedding and then you have position embeddings. So this idea of using three embeddings is same as what original bird also proposes. So for each token, once you have got all of these three embeddings, then all of that goes to the bird model. And at the output end of the bird, the vector for all the CLS tokens that you have, because those essentially just represent the following sentence vector. So let's call them T1, T2 till TK. So these are all k cls vectors now you can think of having logistic on top of each of them that will be trained against zero or one following which you'll calculate binary cross entropy loss that can propagate backwards and you train all of these logistic layers and fine tune the bird so this way the representation that you learn t1 t2 tk are tuned for extractive summarization also one more modification that this method proposes is in the terms of interval embeddings so if you notice in original bird either you have one sentence or two sentence so in case of one sentence interval embedding is same for all the tokens in that sentence whereas in case of two sentences you kind of have differentiability factor let's say if you have ea representing interval embedding for the segment a which is for segment first or sentence one then you'll have eb for sentence two now here since we'll have multiple sentences from the original document the researchers have proposed to use alternate embeddings you can again have ea and then again you can have eb so you have an even odd concept all the odd ones you can put it as ea and all the even ones you can put it as eb this way the model kind of knows the sentence boundaries and that it should not associate adjacent sentences within the same sequence so yeah that is the entire idea apart from logistic authors also played around with using transformers layer on top of bird and also I guess tested out with LSTM layers but logistic and transformers perform little better compared to the LSTM so yeah this was the background about birdsum moving on to our paper 
So talking about the method that is proposed in this paper, they call it a sentence aware summarizer that considers the document hierarchical structure, which are the sections that are usually there in the paper. And then they add a linear classification layer on top of the birdsum sentence representation to predict the relevant section of each sentence. Okay. So if you see the diagram, then this is the original input. You insert CLS before every sentence. This goes to birdsum. And you can see like we have four arrows that are coming out of birdsum, which are corresponding to each of the CLS tokens. Then you have a linear classification layer and the output dimension is also same as the input dimension. Then for each output, you have two losses. One is a sentence selection loss and other is section prediction loss. So because of these two losses, they have used the word multitask loss. So here you can see like from sentence selection, the back propagation would help adjust the weights of a transformer encoder and birdsum in such a way that a model is accurate enough to say if a sentence should be selected as a part of extractive summary or not corresponding to its ground truth whereas the loss from section prediction would help the model to learn and predict if the sentence was from correct section or not so for example if we have a sentence s and let's say that was supposed to be selected as a part of extractive summary which means its ground truth was one and a model says one for that so zero loss would be propagated from sentence selection and let's say the sentence was from introduction section but supposingly a model says more probability for the experiment section so corresponding cross entropy loss would be propagated backwards and the weights would be adjusted in such a way that model gives more weightage in terms of pushing the scores from the section prediction score to zero as well so yeah that is the entire idea behind the multitask objective what the authors propose so as we can see they utilize both of these loss l1 and l2 in a weighted fashion that is parameterized by alpha so you have alpha of l1 plus 1 minus alpha of l2 where l1 corresponds to the binary cross entropy loss which is for the sentence selection because you can either say it should be selected or not whereas l2 is a categorical cross entropy loss because you want the sentence to say to which section does it belong to out of all the sections that you have in the paper so yeah based on the tweaking of alpha you can give more weightage to either sentence selection or section prediction Okay, so now they have experiments and results. So one interesting fact to notice over here is, as the summary length increases, the variation of roots two also would decrease because now your model is given more responsibility in terms of predicting longer summaries. But clearly the multitask clause is always on the higher end and gives better roots two compared to the baseline, even if the model is challenged to predict longer summaries. So which is a good sign, like it kind of scales to the length of the document as well and the performance remains consistent and also the distribution from where it selects the sentences from the entire paper changes so this is from the baseline which is birdsum you can see like the model focuses on initial subset of sentences and doesn't select sentences from somewhere in between the paper so the darker the color gives more probability in terms of the confidence for the model to choose a sentence and the star that you see is the ground truth so you can clearly see like none of the humans have said any of the early 10 sentences to be a part of summary whereas birdsum says like top seven sentences have to be a part of summary and similarly you can see like there's a lot of discrepancy in terms of what human says and model doesn't give much weightage to that whereas this is not the case with with multitask loss objective as most of the time model selects and gives more weightage to the sentences that were also ground truth summaries so yeah, the second loss objective, which was section prediction loss, has kind of given the model the capability to learn the distribution of how important sentences kind of distribute themselves among different segments. That gives another signal for the model to learn which are the important segments or sections in the paper from which it would want to extract more sentences. So I guess now we are done with the paper. So I hope you also found this paper to be an interesting read and learn something new today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.